too. Flip, flip grid. We caught the hashtag flip grid fever last year. Yes, Man. we um, had a nice video with Ryan Miller mm. uh, where we talked about student choice of voice. Yeah, and uh, being able to give. Not everyone. I know, for instance, my son does not like typing things out. He knows what he wants to say. I don't think he's alone. And then he tries to type it out, and it never comes out the same way. Sure, because they're not proficient typers either. No, well, it's not that he's not proficient typers. It's just you know, yeah. I think you're right. You're, you're probably right because he can't follow on with his thought process. No, you're always going to think faster than you can either write or type. So that, except that's, for me, I am very slow from typing. That's true. True statement. <laughs> Anyways, what we want to get at is reflections that are quick and easy. Yes. And Flipgrid does make that easy for the class. Flipgrid is a wonderful tool that is very easy to use. Um, which takes and simplifies the ability for people to do video recording of their short snippets of video recordings of their reflections and their, their opinions, right. their ideas. So it's perfect for introductions, but it's also perfect for reflections. Yeah. And often in lessons, we lose time at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and the reflection piece is the part that's abandoned, which is too bad, because that's really where we kind of get at it. And, and as teachers, I need to know that. Like, did everybody in the class understand that, or do I need to follow up with somebody? Right. So. Using Flipgrid as a reflectionary piece is a great piece of formative assessment. Yes, I agree. It's completely free. So if you go to flipgrid.com. Wow, well, you say completely free. Well, to start with. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is free to start. Um, there are some um, Caveats, pricing some for, for some... premium services, I believe they call it. Um, but it's also an app, so you can use it on your phones and tablets. But so if... what it is when you get the free one is you get one grid. Yes. And your grid can have multiple topics. Per, uh, correct. And yes. multiple ideas under the said topic. Correct. It will limit how how many options you have for recordings per right. idea. Yes. Um, and there probably is a limit to how many topics we haven't hit that point yet. So right. we'll, it is great for an elementary teacher who has the same group of kids throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. Create one grid, feels like a classroom, mm -hmm. and then you have your topics, which would be all the different things you want them to reflect on throughout the year. So if you want to have multiple grids because you want to separate your classes and so on and so forth, the pricing is affordable. Yeah, but you would want to check that out and talk to your administrators to see if they purchase that for you sure but i'm just going to show you how to quickly set up a grid or yep. a classroom and post some ideas and topics so to start with you just go to flipgrid.com and click sign up today if you haven't already um and just like anything these days there's a lot of things you can do but uh sign up with google seems to be the easiest for us we're google domain school as most people know it just comes in and says which account since i have so many um and it'll pop me into flipgrid now i've already created this grid um, you would be prompted to create a new grid. Mine is grayed out, just as Tom said, I only allowed one with this free service, but here it is. So I've already populated a picture and thrown some things in. You can always edit your grid to get started. Um, if I click on that right now, you'll also see that within my grid, I have two topics. Perfect. I have one called class intros, yep. which is default actually. It mm -hmm. comes with Flipgrid. Yep. You don't even have to set it up, it's ready to go, just so you can introduce yourself in the class. And one with ideas. And then there's some pre-populated ones. One is called ideas, which is great because maybe you don't want to necessarily have a specific prompt, but rather, hey, if anybody has some great ideas, throw it in here and we'll take a look at it. That's one of the um, pre pre-populated ones as well. So let's pop a new idea, a new topic in here, see what happens. Pop a new topic. Yep. So right here where the yep. rocket ship is, add a new topic. Or you had the plus new topic. True. Yeah, I, mean, I can get to it multiple ways. Yep. Here's where I can put some uh, topic ideas or titles. So I'll do like 20% time, for instance. You can tell it when it displays. So you can preload them and then have them display later on. Um, under video response time with the freebie, you get just the two options, the 15 yep. quick seconds or the minute 30. With premium, of course, you get all of these other for, options. Well. For when it comes to observations, I think a minute 30 is good. Plenty. It's a good amount of time for students to be able to. 15 is not enough, I think. Usually, right. You know, I think between a minute and two minutes is, is the perfect amount of time for that. Fifteen wouldn't be bad if you were going to introduce everybody and say, all right, for instance, I need you to tell me who you are, where you're from, and what's your favorite ice cream or something. Yeah. And you can do, bang that out in 15 yeah. seconds. But you're right. Um, I can also do a lot more with um, topic descriptions and, and questions. But So this one might be, what would you learn about if I gave you some um, alone time? I don't know. That's good for 20% time. So one of the things that I found very interesting in this, which I think is a great feature that you scroll down a little bit on there. Yeah, no, other way. You, oh, scroll you scrolled up. it yeah, down yeah, on, gotcha. um, is response moderation. One of the things that I've heard from people a lot of times is um, how do I make sure that what's being posted on there is appropriate for mm -hmm. the people to look at? Well, you turn on response moderation. The teacher gets an alert that says, 
a, a new post has been put up there, you then go and review it before you post it up for the rest of the class to see. Yeah, it's just like a blog. So you can kind yep. of pre-screen it before it goes live, which yep. is nice. Um, hopefully you don't have to do that, but of course there's different classrooms, different makeups. Um, you have a lot of different things down here to choose from. A lot of it is kind of already done for you or you can skip actually I've found, uh, especially if you're a new user, it might be good to just try it like that first and then get into that. Uh, the more the bells, bells and features, whistles yep. as we go along. Um, and then I'm just going to create the topic. Immedi hey. Immediately it gives me a grid code. That's what everybody would need. Right. Um, it also gives me the quick link and all of that stuff. There's two quick links there. There is. One quick link, one code is to the uh, grid. grid. The other one is directly to that topic. Right. So just make sure to so depending which on which one, one you want. Doing. Yeah, and it clearly defines this is the yep. grid, this one's the topic, and yep. that way you can go to both. All right. So I literally have zero videos in here because I just created it. But what I would do is I'd say, all right, students, I need you to go through this. So if I click on the flip code, um, it will bring up, <laughs> it'll bring up the, um, yeah, it'll, it'll bring up the one that we're talking about. This is what the student view would look like. Yep. If I click on the code itself, it'll uh, blow it way up and give me a QR code. So I, in class, I could just shine that on screen. They could use their phones to QR code it or if you're take down the code, right, depending on where you are. But that code is pretty you know, short. It's it's quick. It's no different than a Google Classroom code. Right. Um, about the same length. So, and you can obviously, you can put the link right into your Google Classroom. Right. So you go there, you go to your class, and then they're clicking on going to the right to their grid. So now that I'm in student view, I, I can come up and it says record your response. It tells me I have 90 seconds. So as a student, I can kind of prepare mm -hmm. for it first. I can even practice right here with the camera on me. Um, and I can just click on this and say, all right, in three, two, one, I'm going to start recording. So my idea for 20% time is to not be working with this guy any longer. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it would be something like student-run food trucks at, at varsity baseball games. So that would be kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. As you can see, that was only about 15 seconds. Yeah, it wasn't very long. Right. The nice thing is I can preview this before I send it along. I can trash it. So I could record this 10 times before sure. I send it. So I don't, I'm comfortable as a student sending it along. Yep. Um, so the minute I hit the green so arrow, it goes through the preview. Let's pretend I'm okay with it. I probably guy. wouldn't have been with this one, but um, <laughs> it's going to say, all right, let's get going. It's also going to let me take a picture um, for my avatar. Hey, selfie for students. And then you can also, of course, add stickies. You can even add a drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bells and whistles. Can we add a mustache on you? Ah. No. And then I'm just going to enter a couple of quick credentials. Um, first and last name is required. It's yep. only going to share my last initial. Yep. Um, the other stuff is all optional. So I'm just going to submit my video. And if you took a look at it now as a student, um, there's the video. You would see it. Hmm? Perfect. And there we go. Quick formative assessments. And now anytime a new student comes in, they click the plus sign and they just keep adding videos to it. Uh, as a teacher, I get an email notification whether or not I turned on the um, response validation or not. Yeah. Um, so I will be able to see all of those things and we can reflect on class. All the students would as well as soon as the teacher allows it. So Quick hit, start basic, get moving, get running. The other great thing so is as a student comes in and clicks on somebody else's video, they get these options at the bottom if you turn them on. Yep. So I can provide feedback to students in my class as well as just the teacher constantly doing the feedback. So it's it's reflective, but it's for a larger audience yes. too, which is kind of nice. Yep. And you get the little emoticons, emojis. That's right. Sort of a little, hey, good job. Right. Fantastic. All right. So uh, that is Flipgrid in a nutshell. Yep. And now you can go and hashtag... Catch, catch hashtag flip grid fever. Yes. Uh, Follow them on Twitter. It's at, at flip grid. Yep. Um, they have a lot of great ideas, a ton of teachers with some amazing ideas and how they're using it. Um, check it out. There's a fantastic crew that works there too. That's very true. responsive. Very, very responsive. Yep. Yes. If you have any questions, anything, you know, you shoot them an email, do their, their, their support section. They're, they're fantastic. We'll catch you later. Yep.